Okay, so in today's video, I would like to share six tips that you guys need to know before you read your classics. But first, I would like to remind you guys that all of the tips that I'm going to mention are just based on my personal experience and the information that I found on the internet. So they're not your definite tips, the only ones that you need to know to understand your classics. I believe there are also many other tips uh, out there that are valuable. But I do hope that this video will still be helpful for all of you. And with that out of the way, let's talk about the first tip. Okay, so you probably have heard about this one a lot and it's pretty common, but in my opinion, a dictionary truly helps a lot, especially for me. And the reason for this is because English is not my first language, and therefore there are so many words that I'm not familiar uh, with, although these words might be commonly used by people in English-speaking countries. In addition to that, sometimes words have multiple meanings. For example, the word husband, I mean, if it's used as a noun, it definitely, you know, I mean, of course, means the man to whom you are married. But if it's used as a verb, which is rarely, it means uh, to use something sparingly so you don't waste it all. But I know that some people might complain and say that it's kind of annoying you know, to shift your focus from your book to your dictionary and then to your book again and then to your dictionary again. And yeah, I can understand that. But ultimately, it all depends on your goal. Personally, I always want to understand as much as possible from the very first time I read my classics. So you can say that I would rather feel annoyed than not understand the classics. Besides, you don't have to translate every single word. I mean, if you're still able to understand the gist of the sentence or the paragraph, I think it's okay to you know, keep moving on. But if there are a couple of words or maybe just a word that make the sentence or the paragraph uh, you were reading confusing, then maybe it's time to pick up that dictionary. <laughs> So there are actually websites out there that can help you to understand your classics better. Some of them are entirely free, some are somewhat free, and some are not free at all. The most famous one is probably Sparknotes, which has analyzed more than hundreds of classics, including The Count of Monte Cristo, Crime and Punishment, All Quiet on the Western Front, Anna Karenina, uh, To Kill a Mockingbird, 1984, and many others. It provides a short summary for each chapter and then also the analysis of the chapters, characters, quotes, motifs, themes, symbols, and many others. It also provides uh, infographics uh, for some of the novels that it has analyzed, which I find to be beautiful and also informative. Moreover, Sparknotes also provides modern English translation for some classics like A Tale of Two Cities and works by William Shakespeare. So if you want to read Hamlet and understand it right now, you can just go to Sparknotes. In fact, you don't even have to buy the book itself because Sparknotes also provides the original text. And there are still many others like Cliff Notes, E Notes, Great Saver, and lit charts, which is one of my personal favorite. And the reason for this is because lit charts also analyzes modern texts such as uh, All Light We Cannot See, A Gentleman in Moscow, The Road and No Country for Old Man by Cormac McCarthy, and then also uh, some books by Neil Gaiman such as The Graveyard Book and American Gods. Unfortunately though, lit chart is not entirely free. But what's weird about it is that you can access more contents if you use the app. For example, if you want to read the detailed analysis of the graveyard book by Neil Gaiman, you can read it if you use the app. You can't read it on the website's version. It's locked behind a paywall. I don't know why this is the case, but I guess it is what it is. So I'll put the links to all of these websites in the description below, and I urge you guys to check all of them and see if the classics that you are about to read or the classics that you have read have been analyzed by any of them. Sometimes there are also books that are dedicated to the classics. For example, The Cambridge Companion to Corinne McCarthy, Cambridge Companion to Fyodor Dostoevsky, and A Beginner's Guide to Dante's Defined Comedy. But these books sometimes can be quite expensive and <laughs> even more expensive than the books themselves. But I guess if you really want to understand uh, the books and probably even the authors themselves, I think these books are worth your money.
Okay, so usually classics have been translated by many different translators, and although the translators technically translated the same thing, the translation could still be different. And sometimes the books could also be structured differently. And for example, I'm going to use The Inferno, which is the first part in The Divine Comedy by Dante Alighieri. So I actually have two versions of The Inferno. So I have the one by John D. Sinclair, as you can see here. And I also have another one by Robert and Jean Hollander. I hope you guys can see it. So yeah, these are the two versions that I have. So if you buy the one by John D. Sinclair, this is what you are going to get. So you'll get the Italian text on the left and also the translation on the right. And as you can see, the translation here uh, is written in paragraphs. And then at the end of it, at the end of each canto, I mean, uh, you'll get the footnotes right here. So here are the footnotes. And after that, you will get a note which basically explains the canto even further. So yeah, so that's basically a little bit about the version by John D. Sinclair. Oh yeah, just a little bit more information. Sometimes uh, the notes of two cantos can be combined into one. So basically one note for two cantos. But most of the time, uh, you will have a note for each canto. So now, if you buy the version by Robert and Jean Hollander, you'll get something that's different. Okay. So instead of cantos, uh, the version by Jean and Robert Hollander divided the poem into several sections, and its section is named Inferno 1, Inferno 2, Inferno 3, and so forth and so on. And as you can see here, you will get an outline at the beginning of each segment. This outline, of course, can help you to understand what's going to happen in the first part uh, of this poem. And just like the John D. Sinclair version, you will get the Italian text on the left side here, and then you'll also get the translation on the right side. But as you can see, unlike the version by John D. Sinclair, the poem here, or the translation, is written in lines. Yeah, so that's how it looks like. And at the end of each part, you will get long notes, essentially. The notes here, of course, explains the line in the first part. And yeah, it is actually pretty long, as long as, you know, 10 pages. And that's basically the version by Robert and Jean Hollander. And in my opinion, although I've only read a couple of pages of the Inferno, the translation by Robert and Jean Hollander is actually a little bit more easier to understand, a little more accessible in my opinion. So before you buy your classics, you probably want to check all of the versions that are available and see which one that you like the most. You can also go to Amazon and Google Books to read a couple of pages from the version that you want to buy so you can at least have an idea about what you are going to get. Personally, I often buy the ones published by Penguin Classics, if not Oxford Classics, because they tend to provide notes and explanation, which, in my opinion, are valuable. Okay, so before we talk about the next tip, please don't forget to subscribe, especially if you enjoy all of my contents. And also turn that notification bell on, so that you will always know whenever I upload a new video, which is not that often, sadly. <laughs> and also like and share this video as well, especially if you like it. Thank you. Okay, so if the things that I mentioned earlier aren't enough, you can still find videos on YouTube that help you to understand the classics that you read. For example, Tuck Notes videos, although sadly, there are no more new uploads. But there are still others, you know? Another example, probably Leaf by Leaf, which actually made a three hour long video about the gravity's rainbow. A novel uh, which is basically known uh, for how impenetrable it is. And there are also other videos, uh, for example, videos by Yale Courses, which are basically lectures. There are videos uh, by them about Wise Blood by Flannery O'Connor and also Light in August by William Faulkner. So if you want to understand your classics better, you can just try to find these videos on YouTube. And although some of them are pretty long and pretty old, I think they'll still definitely be worth your time.
Okay, so for the last tip, if there is a sentence or a paragraph that you don't understand at all, just write the sentence or a couple of sentences of that paragraph on Google search and click enter. And just pray that someone at one point was also confused by that sentence and someone else has provided the explanation. It doesn't always work, but sometimes it does. For example, there is this one line from The Road by Cormac McCarthy that I wasn't able to understand at all. And it's this one. Like the great pendulum in its rotunda scribing through the long day movements of the universe, of which you may say, it knows nothing and yet know it must. So when I read this for the first time, I had no clue what Cormac McCarthy was talking about. But after I typed that sentence on Google uh, search and click enter, I found some explanation. And apparently that uh, sentence referred to the Foucault's pendulum. So as you can see, does work, although not always, you know, sometimes. But I guess it's worth a shot, especially if there are no other ways. So yeah, those are basically the six tips that I would like to share with you guys today. And I do hope that those tips can help you to enjoy and also understand the classics that you want to read or you have read even better. But I believe that I'm not the only one who has read classics. I believe that you guys also have read them as well. So if you have any tips, suggestions, and advice, please share them in the comments below and let the whole world know. And I'll definitely check them out. And with that, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.